Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa. This is Unai Emery's press conference reaction episode. I feel a bit like Tony Pulis, you know, when Tony Pulis looks like he's been dressed in the club shop. So I've been to uh, Villa Park today and you guys know that I've been waiting for these training tops to drop. So today was the day that they were released, the away kits out, and I was all over it. So I went to the new club shop and it is absolutely unbelievable. Like the transformation of, of what it looks like, it's grand, it's big, it's spacious. There's vast amounts of stock. There's uh, the villa kit walls. You've got the retro with the flooring, with the programs in and the old shirts. You've also got a sort of like a bit of a museum section at the back. You've got some other cool stuff like new mugs and stuff. But, yeah, training kits, it's loads better. Uh, it's just brilliant, to be fair. And, and I think it's a step in the right direction for Villa. With our merchandise, really, there was loads and loads of staff in there, which was good. So, yeah, really good shop. You know, 10 times better. Fair play to Villa because it's definitely needed so i've got this little cheeky i've got a couple of others as well and if you haven't seen my little short that i did i got the uh away pro version so really nice really cool super clean you've got the little av um 150 on the back in gold you've got the badge that's in the in the pro version we got, we got the main event. We got the main event, guys. We we've got it. We've got the Champions League patch. Absolutely fantastic. Just can't wait to hear you at Villa Park. Uh, but yeah, great shirt and uh, yes, super nice. And it's just fresh. It's clean. It's sort of just nice, really. I like it. I think uh, you know a lot of people have been saying, oh, it's it's. It's boring, it's 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 template, it's basic, and it is what it is. Like, you know, we don't want to keep going over the same story, but Castore were a nightmare to come out of the contract because of wet kit gate. Football kits take a long time to design, you know, you're talking over 12 months for a kit to be designed. And you've got to get the stock, you've got to make it, you've got to manufacture it, you've got to get the template, you've got to design it all, and you've just got to We've had to get all of that to come together from what, probably late November, December time to get the kits. So I think for the first round of Adidas and Aston Villa, the kits are nice. And I think hopefully over time they'll get better and better. And, you know, we'll get a little bit more creative with them. And I think hopefully they can become a little bit, you know, a little, a little bit different, really, and, and a bit fresher, and we get a different vibe. So we've got a lot to go through. We will go through Unai's press out in a second. But what I do want to touch on is that there have been a little bit of breaking news. There's been a bit of news from Monchi. Monchi's done an interview, so it's, it's I'm going to go through that as well. So breaking news first is that Archer to Southampton is getting closer and closer. 15 million for Archer. Unai is saying that he can't assure Archer of minutes. And I like Archer. I think he's a good player. I think I think he's very good at what he does. I think he's good off the shoulder. I think you give him a chance in the box and he'll he'll he, he's a real clean finisher. But the overall game for where we are, unfortunately. It's not there for me. And it's unfortunate and it's sad that he's probably got to move on and it looks like it's going to be on a permanence. But for where we are, it's just not going to work. So I think Archer going is probably a good move for both. We have then got some news on Philogene, and this is coming from Monchi. So, and it's all about Unai feeling that he made a mistake. And he kept saying to Monchi last season, I think we've made a mistake with letting uh, Jaden go. So, this is what uh, it was read in the article. So, with Jaden, it's an interesting story. When he left last season, maybe not every day, but every week, Uno would say to me, Monchi, maybe we've made a mistake to sell Jaden because he played very well for Hull. 
Uh, I would say, okay, Unai, but we have the possibility to bring him back. And I just think that's really telling. And, and, and not only telling is it because we got we sold him and we've bought him back, but it's interesting what Unai feels of Philogene and how we can develop him and, and make him a better player. And yeah, I think we would all probably say that when we let him go last season, it was a bit of a shock because pre-season, he was absolutely firing. He was fantastic. He was expressive, explosive, creative. So I think for Jaden, it's great that Uno's got him back and hopefully he's going to blossom and he's going to grow and he's going to push Bailey and he's going to push for starts. So and when he gets his opportunity, he's going to take it. We've then got Monchi talking about Jacob Ramsey, which is really interesting as well. If we wanted to sell Jacob Ramsey, we would have sold him already because we had different clubs. But Unai has big confidence in him. And I think that Jacob can continue to improve his level. But Unai thinks that with Jacob, Aston Villa is the best thing. He's convinced 100% that Jacob's level will increase this season. So again... It feels like we're now in that sort of like second phase of Ramsey with Unai now. That development is just going to start to grow. It's going to start to flourish. We're really going to get to see Unai Emery working with Ramsey, improving him and pushing him further. And I'm expecting big things from Ramsey this season. I think it's important that he, he pushes on, he develops, he grows and he starts to become... First name on the team sheet, Jacob Ramsey. Carlos, completely with us now. Carlos wasn't with us, and now he's back with us. So, I don't know whether the move was going to happen, and talks were ongoing, and it looked like it was happening, and now it's not, or whether Carlos... He's going to still leave and Unai is saying he's here for now and we're going to utilise him. We're going to use him. So it's a really interesting one with Carlos now. He's back training. He's been back a few days, I think, and he's in contention to play for Aston Villa again. So it's an interesting one. I don't know what's happening, but Carlos probably will be in the squad tomorrow and will be available to play. So... We know that Crystal Palace are probably going to sell Mark Way to Newcastle. That looks like it's going to happen. Anderson to Fulham. £20 million bid has got in. 25 has got in. So Fulham won Anderson. But I can't imagine that uh, Palace will sell Anderson and Gwaii in the same window, as well as selling Elise. So I think maybe that might mean that Fulham go back in for Carlos. So who knows what's going on there? But what I think we are going to start to see are those little dominoes. When one falls, the other one falls, the other one falls, and you sort of get that sort of pattern of the ripple effect of a player moving, the market opens up, and then there's all pathways of these leading pieces. I think that's where we're starting to get to in the market now. Anyway, so Udo Emery is speaking here. So let's go to. Uh, the iPad then. So, tomorrow is a very good match. The objective we have must be similar to the potential we have. I am very motivated. So, that's not a riddle, but it feels like a bit of a riddle. So, how do we read into this? So, tomorrow is a good match. Okay, fair enough. The objective we have must be similar to the potential we have. So I guess what he's trying to say is that it's two teams coming up against each other that are probably quite good, that are going to be up there, and we have to live up to our potential and get the result in which we want to desire of where we want to finish. So Uno has also been talking today, and he's mentioned that Villa are seventh in the pecking order to get so not to get top four, but that's the order like Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool. He's put Newcastle, Chelsea, uh, United, Spurs all ahead of us, and he did that last season. So I, I think it's psychological for memory because what he's doing is he's not putting the pressure on the players initially. Maybe 
internally. They've got their objectives, where we want to finish, what we want to do. But like last year, if you remember last year, when we were like top four for pretty much all the season, and he kept going sort of like game week 32 or 33, game week 33, ask me, we'll talk about where we are then. I think it's the exact same scenario. Like, yeah, put pressure on everyone else. We're not, we're not sort of the team to get top four. We're in the fight for it. We're in the mix for it. But other teams are in front of us. Other teams have got bigger budgets. Other teams are have, have more success than us. So we'll just go back. We'll go from top four. We'll just go back a bit, and we'll just we'll just hide hide for a bit. We'll hide till game week thirty three. We'll come to life, and then we'll get top four again. That, that's what I think he's meaning. And he's put—he's very motivated. If anyone's seen Emery today, he's got a bit of stubble on him. So I imagine that he's been—you know—been in body wars, been in them dark rooms, in them dark rooms. He's had one-to-one sessions. He's got his team there. They're, they're doing the tactics of whatever how we're going to play, etc. And he'll probably come out tomorrow with his nice, fresh, little clean shave, and he'll be ready to go. So. Uh, that's what that's what he's been speaking about, right? So, uh, every on Champions League, I want to compete in the Champions League, being protagonists. So, it, it's, it's literally exactly how I feel about Villa in the Champions League. Like, we we can we can be under the radar, we can we can do all of this, but I think we've got to we've got to strive and we've got to have our own individual aims to to be better to to compete and, and I think that's something that I, I really stand by in the Champions League. I think look we're coming up against the elite, the, the elite that we're coming up against. But I think we've got a competitive team and I think our team suits I think it suits the Champions League a little bit. I, I think we've got really good players i think we've got a lot of options i think yes we need a little bit more but i think we will get there with those signings i think if you look at this now you think okay watkins duran let we're comfortable to let archer go must mean something he's there uh so you know he's an elite coach he's an elite manager and we worked really hard last year and i think we've got to reap the rewards but we've also got to showcase us, showcase Aston Villa now to the European stage. Yes, we got in the Europa Conference League. Are, are all the eyes on the Conference League? I don't think they are. But all the eyes are on the Champions League, you know. And, and I think the club has got to market what we are as well. Like, if we draw Real Madrid, it's got to be... Like, we've got to push it. We've got to push the marketing. We've got to push the posters. We've got to push the billboards, and just so it's like Aston Villa is there to compete on this stage. So, yeah, absolutely massive. Love it. You know, I'm so proud that I'm going to watch Champions League football. So, yeah, absolutely buzzing. So, Emery on expectations in the Premier League to keep the same competitive spirit we had last year with the challenges being more difficult. I think it will have to be more demanding. I think it will have to be more demanded. So, yeah, and I, I think that's where I think that's probably where deep down I am a, 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 as a Villa fan as well. And a, when we when we talk about Villa, so when when I did um, one of the episodes this week, and I said like, "Oh, we're going to West Ham," and as Villa fans, we should put our chest out a little bit and, and believe that we can go there and get the victory. And I think that's where we are as a team now. It's not being arrogant. It's not being overconfident. But it's it's sort of, that's where we are now. That That's what club we are. We've shown that we're going to get top four. And we've shown we can do it. And we've shown we can compete. And I also felt like last year, even in Europe, it was a little bit like... It we, because we'd only been in Europe for one season, we'd sort of we'd sort of allow it a little bit, like we'd sort of allow a little bit of a poor performance as long as we got through, and we we, we were just enjoying it a little bit. And I, I don't think we're here to enjoy it. I, I think as fans, the top four, yeah, but I mean Champions League. But I think the actual league. I think Unai now as 
he's going to start going up the gears a little bit, I think, with his with his managerial demands and, and the way he works. Because when he first came into Villa, he's had to like regalvanize the club. He, he's had to coach all of the players to find his way, and, and everybody has to be on his same page. But now he's been here like nearly two years in, in November. This is his team now. This is the way he operates. This is his club. And he, he's got to start to demand excellence from them. And, and they've got to be able to, like, step up more. And sort of, like, sometimes we'd have those results last season where we, we'd we be a bit flaky-ish, you know, Chelsea at home, 2-0 up. And then we, we looked like we were going to lose that game three. That's got to stop. And, and he's demanding nature now hopefully he's going to stop that yeah we're going to lose some games but we, we're, there, we're there now uh, we're with Unai and we've got to just be the best we physically possibly can be and he's got no excuses we don't do excuses and I think just that's that's the, the, the manner of which the man he's going to have now he's got to be demanding he's got to keep pushing us because I think sometimes you don't want to, and I don't think we would because I was listening to McGinn and McGinn was talking about like the challenges of like the league and stuff. And, and one of the guys on TalkSport asked him like, can you win the league? And it, 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 it wasn't like he struggled to answer it at first, but the more he actually like started speaking about it, he was sort of saying like, well, yeah, we are Aston Villa. Like we, we did have the chance to go top of the league at Christmas. Like it was like an initial, like, oh, he was no, nah, we're not gonna do that. But then, like, the more he started talking, the more he was like thinking, I think he must have been thinking of like what Unai was saying stuff. And he was kind of like, you know, you know, it's not we, we're not there yet, but you know, that that's that's the sort of aim that we've got now. So I think that's sort of Massive, really. So we've we've gone through quite a lot, uh, quite a few talking points. Uh, we've created a lot of content this week. A full cycle of, you know, match previews, predicted lineups. A lot of you really, really enjoyed it. I had a lot of West Ham fans commenting saying, you know, that they really enjoyed it. The opposition. That I'll tag on to the end of this video if you've not watched that. Uh, this episode. We've got a match reaction tomorrow. Then we'll have tactical debrief. So this is like our match cycle now of uh, what, we, what we're going to do during the course of the season. So, you know, just get on board if you're not subscribed. Uh, make sure you're smashing the likes on every video. Comment your thoughts. Just just get involved with it. Have, have, have fun with it. and Enjoy the content. Uh, and just enjoy the season. Uh, I think that's the main thing. He's also spoke about Mings. So Mings, he's not training with us yet, but hopefully at the beginning of September, he's going to be joining us. So that's uh, positive as well. And what I will say is let's, let's enjoy the season. If there are any low sticking Results that are a little bit difficult, i.e. tomorrow. Let's not say things that are very, very silly. And let's let's be calm and let's let's not lose our heads. Because I remember last season, the 5-1, right, guys? 5-1 we lost on the opening day last season. On the opening day, anything can happen. And let's just see what happens. But, um, yeah. So we lost the first day, game last time. We got top four. And let's just not lose our heads, right? Up the villa. Speak to you all soon.